How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boy Alex today. So the boys at Fireside Yankees have been at the Pinstripes Pride event um, at the American Dream Mall this weekend, meeting some players, getting some interviews, meeting some fans. I went on Friday, got myself a little John Flaherty autograph, asked him a question about Austin Wells, which we'll have posted for you guys on the channel this week, obviously. A lot of content coming out. They spoke to Spencer Jones, Austin Wells. They spoke to Aaron Boone. They spoke to pretty much everybody. Oswaldo Cabrera was there as well. Um, there's a lot of content coming out about what these guys said and obviously um, you know, our questions to them. But I'll tell you this right now. This team has a really interesting young core developing, and comparably to last season, I think it's kind of a cool narrative to talk about how we've transitioned away from this older core. You know, we're talking about Josh Donaldson was 38 years old last year. A lot of older players on this team, a lot of them not carrying their weight. You know, Giancarlo Stanton, DJ, Le Le DJ LeMay, he was struggled in the first half of the year. But now we look at our, our team right now. We look at the roster and we say to ourselves, this team is ushering in a whole new generation of talent, a whole new wave of young players. And I think that's really cool to talk about because – these young guys have played with each other at multiple levels in the minor league system. Um, in Double A itself, you know we have Anthony Volpe, you got Austin Wells. These guys have won championships at the minor league level in multiple stages, and I think that winning culture sometimes um, you can leverage that. You can leverage winners, uh, and I think these guys have what it takes. And you know what I love the most about these young players is they're not just waiting around for spring training, waiting around for their opportunity. They're grasping it. Anthony Volpe is down in Tampa. We spoke to Will Warren a week ago. He's down in Tampa. Oswald Peraza was down in Tampa. Glaber Torres is down there. Um, you know, some of the veterans, Aaron Judge, Jose Trevino, Austin Wells is down there. Um, you know, this is a, definitely an interesting situation where the young guys are kind of coming up as leaders. They're, they're looking as though they're trying to set the stage for this upcoming season. You know, you usually expect, you know, Judge is down there, and we expect him to be. You know, he's the captain. He's the guy. But I'll say this right now. These young players are setting the tone. These young players are setting the stage for what – every veteran on this team should be making millions and millions of dollars. You should be there early. You should be putting the work in. You should not be lazy. You should be proactive. And of course, these guys are working diligently, but you see it tangibly. You see it on, you know, not just on social media, but you see it from talking to them. And Anthony Volpe said yesterday, we've been working. Like they, these guys have been working hard, not just to prepare, but to iron out a lot of the weaknesses from their game. Now, Anthony Volpe specifically, I want to touch on him for a second. We know what his upside is. He has all-star potential. Is it going to be in 2024? Maybe not. But we know that he can be that good. Why? We saw it at every minor league level. The guy can hit for power. He can run the bases. He's an athlete. He set the franchise record with 15 defensive runs saved at shortstop. Um, not just as a rookie, but in general. No one's ever had 15 defensive runs saved at shortstop for the Yankees in the history of the organization. Volpe was the first one to do it, and he was a rookie at 21 years old. He's 22 now. The main thing I'm looking from Volpe, he makes good contact, about a 42.9% hard hit rate, 9% barrel rate. When he makes contact, it's good stuff. The problem is his whiff rates were up, chase rates were a little up against off-speed and breaking pitches. He was solid against fastballs, but really struggled against breaking and off-speed. Um, so that's where I think he's going to be looking to improve, identifying differences in pitches, uh, being patient, aggressive when he needs to be. He struggled against right-handed pitching, but was solid against left-handed pitching. So we know where Volpe needs to improve, and I think, well, we know he knows where he's got to improve too, and we know for a fact he's been working hard this offseason to – you know, tweak those fine details, those those kind of minute things to promote a better season in 2024 and a better career moving forward. Now, we spoke to Will Warren last week, as I said, and he told us Austin Wells is something special, not just behind the dish, but also uh, because of his lefty bat. Now, Flaherty also mimicked the same exact thing, mirrored the same thing that Will Warren said as well, and said that you have to have command over your pitching core. And Will Warren said it. He knows how to identify. He knows how to see what each individual pitcher is feeling and, and kind of react accordingly. Sometimes Will wants to be too perfect. And Austin Wells steps and said, man, just get the ball over the plate. Your stuff is good enough. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to do it to the best of your ability and be confident with what you're throwing. So 
Austin Wells has a unique ability to connect with his pitchers and identify their character and how they like to respond to adversity, what they're feeling when they're on. And yes, Jose Trevino is going to play a really big part this upcoming season, but I would not be surprised if it was a 50-50 split between him and Wells. Wells is really actually good against left-handed batting, um, and, and Trevino obviously you know good against right-handed batting. So you see kind of the platoon concept here. The Yankees can use these guys in different ways, uh, but I do believe that Jose Trevino will be the starter um, you know, in the personal catcher to Garrett Cole, who he has a lot of familiarity with, and obviously Garrett Cole coming off a Cy Young award-winning season. Want to keep things the same as they can. Uh, but guys, the, I think the craziest thing about this entire equation isn't the fact that Austin Wells and, and you know, Anthony Volpe and Oswaldo Cabrera and Oswald Peraza and Jason Dominguez was down in, in Tampa as well last week or two weeks ago. It's not just these guys that are young, but consider this. Austin Wells is 24 years old. You're not going to believe who's 25. Juan Soto. Juan Soto's been in the MLB since he's 19 years old. He's played three consecutive seasons with a minimum of 152 games played. He's played all 162 games in 2024, or 2023 rather. And the guy is, you know, we're talking about we just installed a Hall of Fame level bat in their prime into a Yankee lineup that already has Aaron Judge and already has a couple of really great players coming back from injury. And the hope is that they will be able to carry their, their weight. And obviously you have guys that are taking bigger steps forward. Wells is probably the best offensive catcher since we've had uh, Gary Sanchez. You know, we had that one or two good seasons. Volpe will take a big step forward, hopefully. DJ LeMay, who showed after the All-Star break last year when Dylan Lawson was fired, that he still got it. Um, you know, that's not to mention Glaber Torres, obviously. So you, you have a couple of really good players here. Um, I do think this offense is going to be astronomically better. But think about the core the Yankees are, are, are kind of building right now. We talked about them being old. We talked about bad contracts. But guys, you got a 25-year-old Juan Soto, a 24-year-old Austin Wells, a 22-year-old Anthony Volpe. I think Peraza is also 22. Cabrera is around that age as well. Will Warren's about 22. And, you know, have Chase Hampton coming up. You got Jason Dominguez, who's 20. Spencer Jones is 22. Think about how many young players are on this team kind of walking into starting roles, walking into, you know, even if it's out of the bullpen, making contributions in any way possible. That's really important, in my opinion, because you have a new ushering of a generation in uh, where you have two primary captains, right? Garrett Cole's that guy that kind of leads by example. Then you have Aaron Judge, who's more outspoken. Um, I think even Alex Verdugo's 28, so a little bit older. But, you know, that young core the Yankees are building, you build around that. And that's why I think the Yankees will end up extending Juan Soto on a monster deal for one primary reason. They want to keep that young core for the next decade. They want those guys to be what they continue to build around. You can build around Judge right now, but he's going to be, he's 31 years old. You can build about Garrett Cole. He's 31 years old. But the truth is you want to be building around guys that are 22 to 25 years old. And they have several premium level talents there, not to mention Dominguez taking over at some point. Jones being a really great prospect. Will Warren having tremendous stuff, just trying to get better against left-handed uh, batters. And then Chase Hampton, who arguably might be our best pitching prospect. Um, you know, there's a lot of talent to work with here. Not to mention guys like Everson Prayer we're forgetting about. Um, you know, they have some other talent like Augustin Ramirez, a catcher kind of developing. Uh, some really good Ben Rice. You know, he could be our future first baseman in 2025 if they, you know, move on from Rizzo. Really good young talent, but what helps them develop is not throwing them into the fire and asking them to carry the load. It's asking Juan Soto and Aaron Judge, be our offense, guys. Rizzo, you know, be our offense. DJ the Mayhew, carry your weight. That's where you're kind of looking because – when you have really great talent like this, it takes a lot of pressure off of your younger guys to be to step in and make instant impacts. Volpe now has the luxury of batting number nine in the order and being the kind of guy that sits there and says, I can develop at my pace. There's not much pressure on me right now. I know the offense will score runs no matter what. I think that lack of, that lack of pressure um, is, is generally going to be a good thing for these young players. And ultimately, the Yankees have a really nice balance of youth and veteran leadership now. Uh, and, you know, Ryan and I have been talking about this for months. That blend of youth and older talent with experience. And for what it's worth, Juan Soto, not only young, but is extremely experienced. Um you can't really, he's already won a championship. You can't really replicate that sometimes. Um, you know, you're bringing winners into an organization. Juan Soto is a winner. Anthony Volpe is a winner. Austin Wells is a winner. Will Warren's a winner. These guys won at every stage of the minor league level. And I think that ultimately that chemistry and that desire, that knowing what that feels like, what the preparation looks like, that's why those young guys are down in Tampa watching the veterans, setting their own tone, setting their own example. 
this is where it all comes together. So I do think this Yankee team got significantly better uh, this offseason. Offensive firepower significantly. Yes, there's question marks in the bulb in the in the rotation. I am concerned about the bounce back of Rodon. I am concerned about Nestor Cortez, Marcus Stroman. Is it enough? It might not be. But the Yankees have the luxury of waiting because their offense can carry the load, can kind of shield them from bad pitching performances a bit. Um, but the trade deadline will give them more opportunity, obviously, over the summer. Corbin Burns going to the Baltimore Orioles is not good. But maybe we go after a Shane Bieber as a supplement. Maybe we go after Dylan Cease at the deadline. There are options here. The Yankees, there might be done now, but that doesn't mean they're done this season. So keep that in mind. It's a long season, guys. A lot can happen. Acquisitions can go down. Uh, crazy things can happen. You never know if Rodon bounces back and has a Cy Young caliber season. It's happened before, and it could happen again. Um, so I do think that right now, it's best to kind of remain optimistic based on what the Yankees did. Getting Juan Soto, if, if we did nothing but get Juan Soto, that changes the entire dynamic of your offense. We always want more. We always want to improve, of course. But we can't disregard the fact that this team added a Hall of Fame level bat at 25 years old who they're going to try to extend um, this offseason. And that, you know, that's special talent there. You know, he's going to destroy Yankee Stadium. He's going to win those games on Friday night where the lights are the brightest and he needs a big hit. The guy is elite with runners in scoring position. The, dyna the dynamic he brings is something like we have not seen aside from Aaron Judge. He's going to be our second best hitter. In fact, those two guys could end up competing for an MVP this upcoming season. That's how good they are. So always excited to hear your thoughts below. What are your thoughts on this youth movement coming in? This kind of the the change in dynamic, the leadership that we're seeing from these young guys. I think it goes a long way. I imagine you guys do too. Always happy to hear your perspectives and thoughts. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.